Chapter 17, The Waiting Most of August had passed now, and the blazing, burning weather continued. The fame of the three superpolets had of course spread through the flock, and as for their present program, this was an open secret. The spirit of pride and self-reliance, of confidence and aggression, which their deeds inspired was showing itself everywhere. Though still very fearful of the dreaded long noses, and while remaining extremely wary, everyone wanted to do his or her bit. All were keen to hit back at the enemy, to face the foe bravely instead of turning tail and flying away as they had always done. As they waited, <clears throat> so this backs to the wall do-or-die feeling grew among the fox earth flock in their little island fortress surrounded by the armed might of all the foxes in the sandy dells and thick woods of that piece of country. Massey Harris made a magnificent speech from the top of the stable clock in which he promised that the flock would fight the long noses in the milking parlor, in the harrowing house, in the silage pit, and on the dung heap. We will never surrender, he cried. Each day, roosters and hens, cockerels and pullets, and even young growers hardly into their adult feathers would come to the family and volunteer to help in some way, any way when the invasion should come. The nine young brothers of Ransom, Sims, and Jeffreys had, with their wise mother's help, devised a ring of sentry posts guarding the perimeter of the farmhouse and buildings, and it was to man and relieve these that a special squad of the most keen-sighted of the volunteers was sent. Icky and his eight brothers were each to command a post, and each post was so situated and so well manned at every daylight moment that only in the dentist, densest fog or the most torrential rainstorm would any fox be able to approach unseen. No more would the long noses have surprise as one of their weapons. For this reason, also, a picked body of the freedom fighters were formed into reconnaissance patrols which combed every nook and cranny of barn and shed and stack and sty each day and night, in case the enemy should have sneaked in and lain up in an ambush. Nobody had forgotten the great raid. Cloudless day succeeded cloudless day so that the grass of the field surrounding the embattled settlement turned brown and brittle in its thirst for rain, and even surface-rooting trees like beech and birch began to die. Everywhere the talk was of the forthcoming invasion. Alice Chalmers and Alpha Laval, Bamford and Bibby, Crossford and Klaas, and every bearer of a time-honored name within the stout-hearted flock spoke of nothing else. Newly-fledged chicks flew everywhere in excited circles. The old and the crippled came out and did what they could, even if it was only to scratch up a few extra worms for the young and the strong. The patrols patrolled, the guards guarded. Massey Harris made many more stirring speeches, and Spillers watched lovingly over the well-being of her three daughters, those magnificent flying machines who were to be in the forefront of the battle. One day... She heard a young chick who was watching the continuing daily practice, the rick sheet was almost in tatters, say to its mother in an old Dunlop who still, in her speech, clung to the local dialect, Mother, what are those three going to do to the long noses when they come? Long noses, said the old hen. What's mean long noses? Who doesn't call them what they be? Foxes. They gwine to bust them, my dear, you'll see. They gwine to bust the foxes. And so, legend has it, the foxbusters received their honored title. At last came the day when the farmer decided that he had no choice but to start feeding hay to the milking herd. Many cows had dried off in preparation for autumn calving, but the milk yield of the remainder was falling, for there was no grass left in the tawny fields. He therefore picked up the thirty-two runger from its place by the nest, which had satisfactorily provided his breakfast egg these last two or three weeks, carried it back to the Dutch barn, and set it against the stack in its former place. Fetching a tractor and trailer, he then climbed to the top of the stack, and began to throw down bales to make up a load. He was careful not to disturb any sitting or brooding birds, of which there were still many. By chance he had picked a time to move the ladder back when one of the raiders was watching the farm. When <clears throat> and she, for it was one of the vixens, witnessed its removal. Other buildings hid it from her sharp green eyes as the farmer carried it along, but she was sure where it was going. She slipped away to tell the others. 
The lad is back, she panted when she reached them. The lad is back. Tomorrow is L day. And at the break of that next day, a strange thing happened. When Spillers woke, she gave, to the astonishment of the family and her own grave embarrassment, a loud crow. But one or two of the very oldest hens, well versed in flock lore, knew that the crowning of a hen forebodes death. Whose death, they wondered. <laughs>